making yourself thank you for making yourself available and giving your precious time we've just finished the mangla charan Mataji, we are reading the Srimad Bhagavatam. We are on Canto 2, Chapter 7. And the text for today is Text 4, Mataji. So I hand over to you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Om Adhyana Timirandasya Nyanan Jana Shalakaya Chakshri Rumili Tamina Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Namavum Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prattaya Bhutale Shri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Hiti Namini Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharini Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashraita Deshatarini Namo Mahavatanyaya Krishna Prima Pratayate Krishna 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 Chaitanya Nami Gauravati Shri Namaha Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Srinivata Svagata Krishna, Punya Shravana Kirtana, Hradayanta Stovya Bhadrani, Pitu Nuti Sukrut Satam, Nashta Prayeshu Abhadreshu, Mityam Bhagavata Seviya, Bhagavati Tamasloke, Bhakti Pavati Naishtiki. Hare Krishna. Glories to Srila Prabhupada. With this, we can get started, dear devotees. As uh, as Mataji mentioned, we are in the seventh chapter, second canto of Sri Mat Bhagavatam. And um, so it is going to talk about various incarnations of the Lord. Again, um, this chapter is very easy because not much in terms of uh, uh, you know, there is no effort needed to understand the subject matter because it's Lord's Leela. It is very, very simple. And most of it, uh, Srila Prabhupada has already quoted in his purport. And uh, again, we are just going to get a glimpse of the avatars, but in elaborate uh, details will be studied in the future cantos. So you don't have to worry. Oh, I'm just reading briefly about this Leela Avatar. It will be discussed elaborately in the coming chapters. All right, dear devotees. With this, we can get started. So as you all know, we are talking about Avataras. Now, um, so there are six categories of Avatars. One is Purusha Avatar, right? The Purusha Avatars are the, there are, uh, the Krishna first incarnates the three Purusha Avataras. What are the Avataras? It is Karno Takshai Vishnu, uh, Garbo Takshai Vishnu, and Shiro Takshai Vishnu. Again, if you look at Karno Takshai Vishnu, he's the Lord who's lying on the causal ocean. And Garbo Takshai Vishnu, he's the one who's lying on the universal ocean. And then uh, that is Garbo Taka Ocean. And Shiro Takshai Vishnu, mm, the plenary portion of Garbo Takshai Vishnu, is uh, the one who's present in the hearts of every living entity and the Lord who's lying on the ocean of mill. This is the Purusha Avatars. Again, Krishna from Krishna, you know, there is a, a big uh, chart that talks about how Purusha Avatar has come. I'm not going in depth on that. Okay, but we know who the Purusha Avataras are. Then, if you look at Leela Avataras that are mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam, we, uh, it would be Kumaras, Narada, Varaha, Matsya, Naranarayan, um, you know, Dattatreya, all these, uh, Nashimma, Kurma, Vamana, Ramachandra, all of the grid, then, um, you know, we also see Buddha, Kalki, um, Krishna, Krishna is uh, Swayam Bhagavan, okay? So this way, all these are Leela Avataras that are being talked about in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Now, what is, what about Guna Avataras? Guna Avataras means uh, Vishnu, our Lord Vishnu, he appears, uh, so he uh, assumes the post of Guna Avatar. Like Satvik Guna is mode of Guna, mode of goodness uh, and he's responsible for maintenance of this material world. That is assumed by Vishnu. And then we have Brahma uh, and uh, he also assumes his Guna Avataras post, that is Rajasik Guna, uh, that is mode of passion and uh, he's responsible for creation of this universe, material universe. And then we have Shiva who also assumes a Gunavatara post, which is the Gunavatara Tamoguna is what he assumes. And that is nothing but it's mode of ignorance and it is a uh, destruction of the material universe. He's responsible for that. And now 
this is so far we have seen what are the avataras purusha avataras leela avataras and guna avataras now we have manmantara avataras manmantara avataras means in brahma's day uh, there are thousand chatur vyuhas right one let me do things okay so in brahma's uh, in brahma's day there are thousand chatur vyuhas which is divided into 14 periods of rule of manu known as manmantara avataras and uh, manmantara avataras are also talked about in the shrimad bhagavatam like yajna vibhu satyashena hari vaikuntha ajita sarvabhauma dharma sudama yogeshwara like that so again they uh, they they are the ones uh, who who um, you know when the chaturvikas are divided into uh, the 14 periods of the rule of manu that that time the manu the manu avataras are there so the manu avataras are responsible for ruling that they are the fathers of the mankind manu is the father of the mankind and uh, you know during these periods we have manmantara avataras okay and yuga avataras they also come in cycles satya yuga it lasts for um, say uh, 1728000 years and treta yuga lasts for 1296000 years and dwapara yuga lasts for 864000 years kali yuga 432000 years in each of these yugas the lord is going to incarnate with a different body color according to the yuga and uh, this uh, this is uh, what is yuga avataras in satya yuga a white avatara appeared to kartama muni to establish uh, the process of meditation uh, that, that is to establish meditation as a process of self realization And then in treta yuga there is a red avatara appeared to brahma to establish five sacrifices as a process of self realization and in dwapara yuga in dwapara yuga uh, a dark avatara krishna appeared as the son of devaki to establish temple worship as the process of self realization and then in kali yuga a yellow avatar that is chaitanya mahaprabhu he appeared as the son of Ch- sachi mata to establish that uh, chanting of the holy names of the lord is the uh, process for self realization so in each of the yuga so different uh, colored incarnations appear and uh, you know obviously they all come to establish a process uh, for self realization in satya yuga meditation was established as a process of self realization uh, and then in treta yuga we have five sacrifice that is being established as a process of self realization in dwapara we have the temple worship and then in kali yuga now that we have the golden form lord that is chaitanya mahaprabhu son of sachi mata he appeared to establish that the chanting of the holy names of the lord as a process of self realization now we have seen five avataras dear devotees the sixth one is satyavesh avatar satyavesh avatar is empowered incarnation there is again no limit to the number of uh, satyavesh avatars but uh, again uh, when the lord himself establish ex- expands uh, displaying a particular power of the uh, opulence he is known as sakshat when he empowers a living entity with a particular shakti power for specific activity that living entity is called uh, indirect or avesh incarnation like four kumaras they are empowered with knowledge narada he is empowered with bhakti and B- brahma he is empowered with creative power prithu maharaj he is empowered to uh, empowered with the power to maintain the living entities and then parashuram he is empowered with the power to kill the living uh, kill the evil elements and vedavyas he was empowered to compile vedas so these are you know satyavesh avatars when when the when the, when the lord he empowers a living entity with a particular shakti it is a, like a power in this way um, it is an avesha incarnation 
So that's that's Satyavish Avatar or Empowered Incarnations, dear devotees. So with this, we have seen how many kinds of uh, uh, incarnations are there. There are six kinds of incarnations. All right. And now uh, we are specifically going to talk about Leela Avataras. Um, I mean, again, it is mentioned that there are various incarnations of the Lord and uh, there are various Leela, Manvantara, Satyavish Avatars of the Lord along with their prime purpose for descent. Why did they appear? That is being spoken about in this chapter. Why did they appear? What was the reason for their descent like that? And now, I think uh, last three classes, you would have seen about three people. One is Varaha incarnation. And then you would have seen about, so Varaha, again, it is a very beautiful story, dear devotees. We will be seeing in our future canto as well. Uh, you, you know, the person who, oh, oh, the speaker who spoke about it would have spoken about Varaha being the form of sacrifice. And what did he do? He lifted the earth when, when it was drowned into the Karpotaka ocean. And then he also pierced the first demon, Hiranyaksha, with his tusk. Okay, this is going to be elaborated in the future cantos. So nothing to worry. We will be seeing in depth about this pastime. How the exchange, uh, I mean, what happened? How did he uh, lift? And what were some of the uh, exchanges that happened between our Varaha and Hiranyaksha? Again, uh, we are talking about two Manmantras here. So there are two, uh, um, uh, two, two forms which would be clarified in our future canto. Like two forms are there. Um, one is the, um, I think the red uh, uh, Chakshusha Manvantara and the first Manvantara. During both of these times, Varaha appeared. And in what color they appeared, in what form they appeared. And one, what was the purpose? And in the second one, what was the purpose? So this is all something that we would be seeing. But again, a gist of it would have been spoken earlier. Now, so that is uh, activity number one. The second one is Suyagnya. The Suyagnya, he is the son of whom? He is the son. One minute, dear devotees, I am getting a... Hare Krishna, we, are, we, uh, we should appreciate Mataji's uh, uh, coming from California uh, and... Uh, I think it is afternoon there, so from work she's doing this class. Maybe she's getting a call. That's why there is this interruption. Let us just bear with her for some time. Or we can chant till she uh, comes so that uh, at least we can use our time well. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama. Sorry, dear devotees, it was like continuously ringing and bothering me. <laughs> Anyways, so coming back to the second one, the second incarnation is Suetna, and he is the son of Ruchi and Akuti. See, the hierarchy of who these people are, we will be seeing very much in the fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Okay, dear devotees, don't have to worry about it. For now, just understand um, that everything that is described here would be elaborately spoken about, including um, who they came from and uh, what is the relationship, who, who are they, and you know all that would be discussed in very much detail in the fourth canto. Now, um so uh so what uh what, what about suyagnya he begot the demigods headed by suyama in the womb of dakshina as indra he diminished the miseries in the three worlds was called as hari by swayambhuva anu so this is about suyagnya again um uh the third one is kapila and who is kapila he is the son of kardama muni and devahuti and what did he do? He spoke about the science of self-realization to his mother and liberated her in the very lifetime. Again, dear devotees, we will be seeing very, very, very elaborately about Kapila Dev and his teachings uh, in the chapter third in the third canto from uh, verse. I mean, from chapters twenty-eight to thirty-four or thirty-two. 
So it will be very, very, um, they are complex philosophical uh, subject matter because it talks about Sankhya philosophy. It's very, uh, very intriguing, very good to know because uh, obviously uh, there is a science behind the Sankhya philosophy and understanding that would be definitely helpful in our devotional process as well. So we can uh, go through it when it comes. Again, it will be very much elaborately discussed in Canto 3, chapters 28 to 32. Now, um, so this is about Kapila. Okay, if you were to ask, okay, what did Kapila, I mean, as far as Kapila, do we have, uh, I mean, we can definitely go over some information uh, from third canto to understand uh, so what is being spoken there again dear devotees so it is uh, a big one there are different parts to it um, <clears throat> so I'm thinking um, as uh, as far as uh, the teachings of Kaplamuni we have to understand it in very very in depth so I'm thinking we will go through it as it comes uh, so right now you understand that okay so we have uh, Kapila and we have uh, the son of Kapila, I mean, the, the son of Kardamumuni and Devahuti is Kapiladev. And his teachings are Sankhya philosophy, which will be understood in depth. And now, uh, these teachings were presented to, to him, to his mother, Devahuti. Because Devahuti was uh, left alone. Uh, Kardamumuni happened to go uh, after giving birth to 10 daughters. And when, um, you know, Devahuti asked Kapila, oh my God, I have 10 daughters, but since you're you're going to leave who's going to be protecting me or who who are who i'm going to be with when she asked kapila muni that question okay no problem i'll give you a son he will be able to teach you the science and then he 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 can take care of you as well so this is what he told her and then once the son was born he immediately left um, to pursue his devotional service and then kapila happened to give his mom the teachings of sankhya philosophy and that is how, um, you know, he taught this world about, okay, what is, uh, uh, who we are really, right? From a Sankhya perspective, we are not this body, right? So that was being, so he talks about material modes, he talks about body, soul, all that in depth to help us understand how we, how we are not this body, right? That is being elaborately spoken to help us understand that particular fact. So now, uh, the fourth one, which is what is today's verse. So dear devotees, we will try to go through that. Mm, again, uh, there is a context to that verse. Um, <clears throat> meaning, so the great sage Atri prayed for offspring and the Lord being satisfied with him, promised to incarnate as Atri's son, Dattatriya. Datta means he's the son of Atri. And by the grace of the lotus feet of the Lord, Many Yadus, high uh, Hayas, etc. became purified that they obtained both material and spiritual blessings. Here in Srila Prabhupada's purport, we are going to see, uh, Prabhupada talks about transcendental relationship between the personality of Godhead and the living entities are eternally established in five different affectionate humor, humors, which are known as Shanta, Dasya, Sakya, Sakya, Vatsalya, and Madhurya. The sage Atri was related with the Lord in the affectionate Vatsalya humor, and therefore, as a result of his devotional perfection, he was inclined to have the supreme personality of Godhead as his son. The Lord accepted his prayer and he gave himself as the son of Atri. Such a relationship of sonhood between Lord and his pure devotees can be cited in many instances. And because the Lord is unlimited, he has unlimited number of father devotees. Factually, the Lord is the father of all living entities, but out of his transcendental affection and love between Lord and his devotees, the Lord takes more pleasure in becoming the son of a devotee than becoming one's father. Uh, so he loves to become a uh, son of a devotee. He takes pleasure in that. The father actually serves the son, whereas um, 
the father actually serves the son, whereas the son only demands all sorts of services from the father. Therefore, a pure devotee who is inclined to serve the Lord wants him as the son and not his father. The Lord also accepts such service from a devotee and thus the devotee becomes more than the Lord. Because, see, if you're a son, you keep on asking your father, I want this, I want that. That way, what happens? You tend to do more service uh, by, by having a son whom you could do service for. So when the Lord, imagine he becomes the uh, son for you, then how much service would you be doing for him? Right, And that's what is being conveyed here. Lord, he loves to become a son. And uh, he, we all know he's the father of this universe. But Lord also accepts the position of the son. So the devotees get the pleasure of serving the Lord. That is why he loves that uh, role um, uh, of uh, service. And the Lord also accepts such service from the devotee. And thus the devotee becomes more than the Lord. The impersonalist desire to become one with the Supreme, but the devotee becomes more than the Lord, surpassing the desire of the greatest monist. Parents and other relatives of the Lord achieve all mystic opulences automatically because of their intimate relationship with the Lord. Such opulences include the details of material enjoyment, salvation, mystic powers. Therefore, the devotee of the Lord does not seek them separately, wasting their valuable time in life. The valuable time of life should be given to transcendental loving service of the Lord. The other desirable achievements are automatically gained. Again, dear devotees, this is what is repeatedly talked about in Srimad Bhagavatam. You do not have to hanker for hmm, um, a detachment. Say, for example, you want to be detached. You don't have to hanker for detachment. Instead, what you do, you develop attachment to Krishna and that attachment would automatically take care of detachment for you. You do not have to endeavor anything separately. Everything is already there. If you do devotional service, everything is already there. Everything else becomes a byproduct. You do not have to separately endeavor for it. So the more you learn, see for example, um, you are there and so at this time of the hour, everybody is so sleepy and they want to just take it easy. Who wants to listen to Srimad Bhagavatam at 8 p.m. in the night? But you guys, you devotees are coming together and you are listening to Srimad Bhagavatam very attentively. What does this mean? This means you have attachment to Krishna, which is why you are coming and attending the classes every day at this time of the hour. And now... When you start doing this over and over and over, it becomes your habit. It becomes your second nature. And now if somebody calls you at this hour to do something else, you will definitely say no to it. So what does this mean? You are automatically detached from doing a particular activity because of attachment to Krishna. That is what it means. Everything else becomes a byproduct, dear devotees. If you do... Bhakti, Bhakti itself will take care of your maintenance of the body. That's why sadhus, they do not endeavor for it separately. They have complete faith in the Lord that he will provide me a meal every day. Even if he doesn't provide a meal, they are very happy. Why? Because they are in a different world. They are not thinking about, oh, yeah, so 12 o'clock, where is my lunch? What's my, you know, what's going on? My stomach is asking for it. I need it. No. Because they are in a different world. Their needs are automatically taken care of. The remembrance about Krishna, the ruchi of Krishna, uh, the pastimes of Krishna, they keep that keeps them nourished. Because of which, there is no hankering for material uh, opulence or food or clothing or whatever. So that is a different level altogether, dear Vodos. But we should be very firmly convinced about the fact that even if we do not have a job at some point in time, Krishna will take care of me. That faith should be there. He will take care of me. Let me do my bhajan and Krishna will take care of me. He will protect me. He will do everything that is needed for me. So this, this sort of faith should come in a devotee. And that is what we are all striving for. No matter what. Because what is... Um, 
What is Bhakti? Anya Abhilashita Shunyam, Jnana Karmadi Anavratam, Anukulyena Krishna Anushilana Bhakti Rutam. So this, this this should never be forgotten at any point in time. Um, Krishna Anushilana Bhakti Rutama. There is no karma, there is no jnana. We are just <clears throat> doing service to Krishna continuously without any interruption. That is pure devotion. There is no mixture of jnana and karma. Meaning, someday we have to do devotion in such a way that there is no interruption to it at any point in time. And as I told you, that is not possible uh, without the mercy of the pure devotees. That can only happen if, the, if somebody who has it can give it to us. But that should be our goal. One day I have to just forget everything, 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 and just focus on Lord's lotus feet. Nothing but Lord's lotus feet. And here, uh, coming to this verse, dear devotees, it's uh, very important to note, see, the Lord, he incarnated himself as Dhatatriya, the son of Rishi Atri and Anasuya. The history of the birth of Dhatatriya as an incarnation of the Lord is mentioned in Brahma Anta Purana, it seems, in connection with the story of the devoted wife. It is said that Anasuya, the wife of Rishi Atri, prayed before Lord's Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva as follows. Look at it very carefully how she prayed. Again, this is a quotation in Srimad Bhagavatam. It's uh, quoted in the purport 1.3.11. All right, dear devotees, everything that we speak should come from Srimad Bhagavatam. There is a quotation of Brahmanda Purana where it is told how Anasuya prays to Lord, Lordships, Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. How is she praying? May Lord if you are pleased with me and if you desire me to ask for ask you for some sort of blessings, then I pray that uh, you combine together to become my son. Okay? So what is she praying? If you desire me to ask uh, from some sort of blessings, then I pray that you combine together to become my son. This was accepted by the lords and Dattatriya uh, expounded the philosophy of spirit soul and instructed uh, people like uh, Yadu, Haihaya and all of them. Again, dear devotees, there was a prayer, meaning there was a mantra chanted. And because the mantra was chanted, uh, a Lord appeared in that form. And he uh, gave the boom to Anasuya and Atrimuni. So here, the specific uh, stress is on mantra that is being chanted. Meaning, uh, what you desire is one thing, but what mantra you chant is another thing. So the mantra can have a great effect on what is going to come as a result. So based on the mantra, something could be delivered to you. See, this is what we see in the case of Vritrasura. In the prayers of Vritrasura, I mean in the uh, the canto, sixth canto from Srimad Bhagavatam, where Vritrasura Suri is quoted, I'll just give you overview of what that context is to help you understand what is the power of the mantra okay the mantra we chant what significance does it have again it's a big elaborate story uh, which we don't want to get into but i'll just give you a glimpse of okay here this is what happened in the story and uh, uh, you know maybe that is something that we could learn uh, from the story as such so, again, dear devotees, this is from sixth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Okay. After uh, Ajamila's uh, story, there would be Hamsa Guya prayers, and then, uh, uh, and then there will be another episode of uh, Taksha and all that. After that, uh, there comes the episode of how Indra offends his spiritual master. Okay. So, um, uh, now Parikshit Maharaj is putting this question. Indra is failing to disrespect Brihaspati. That is the theme. Now, Parishit Maharaj is asking, why did Brihaspati reject the demigod? What was the offense that uh, uh, our Lord Indra did to the spiritual master? Like that, uh, there, was the, there was a question that was posed by Parikshit Maharaj. And then uh, it's being spoken that Sukadev is saying, see, opulence of Indra's assembly is described and Indra being proud, he transgressed the Vedic uh, etiquette 
when he saw Prahaspati, that is his spiritual master, coming to him, but he did not show respect. That is, he did not rise from his seat and offer him, nor he offered him a seat. He did not do either of these two things. And Prahaspati, knowing about the future of Indra, understands Indra. Oh, he is puffed up by this material opulence. And he leaves the assembly even without cursing Indra. Now, Indra, he realized his mistake of disrespecting his spiritual master and he started to condemn himself. What, uh, you know, he's just like, oh my God. You know, dear devotees, you always would have felt this uh, particular thing in your life also. Uh, you know, if somebody has a little bit of a pure heart, then after they make a mistake, they would start to repent for it, you know. And it's a question of if people would give a chance or not for them, for you to be forgiven. Most of the times in this material world, people will not forgive us for what we do. They, they kind of consider it, oh my God, it's not acceptable, right? And they would not uh, forgive us. But what happens through this is you develop a sort of, um, a, you know, positivity, meaning I did this mistake and I would be very careful going forward. I will never repeat this mistake of uh, doing this to anybody else. Now, this creates a sort of uh, repent, repenting, uh, repent, repentance. And through this repentance, you purify yourself. Okay. Now, Indra is regretting his act. Oh my God, due to my lack of intelligence and pride and material opulence, I insulted my spiritual master. Although in goodness, I became proud due to wealth. Who will accept such wealth? I condemn this wealth. I condemn this opulence. So now, um, those ignorant of superior religions, religious principles should say, king on the throne should not, I mean, king on the throne should respect, right? I mean, the king on the throne should not respect Brahmana. That is what ignorant uh, principles of religion would say. Ignorant readers, what do they do? They mislead people to the path of destruction and path of hell. This is what they do. I will touch uh, my spiritual master's lotus feet without duplicity and satisfy him. This is what I need to do. And, uh, you know, he's kind of regretting for his hack. And Brihaspati, who understood Indra's mind, became invisible and he left the home. Uh, Indra kind of started to search, but he could not find Brihaspati. Indra then laments, 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 and finds no peace, even though he's surrounded by all the demigods. And then now, if somebody understands the weakness of somebody else, then they will plot a plan. Now Indra, he's without spiritual master. So what are these demons thinking? Oh my God, this is a good opportunity for us. Let's attack uh, Indra. Hearing Indra's pitiable condition, demons following Sukracharya's instruction declared war against the demigods. And demigods got injured severely by the demons and they approached Brahma for shelter and instruction. And now Brahma, he pacified the demigods by his causeless mercy. And then um, we also see Brahma's uh, instruction was then given. Okay, you know, he's giving instructions to the Indra. He's telling, due to your madness of material opulence, you have acted impudently towards your spiritual master. He is the best of the Brahmanas. Now, because of your misbehavior towards your spiritual master, you have been defeated by the weak demons. They are very weak people. But because you don't have shelter of your spiritual master, you have been defeated. Although weak, the demons gain strength by the power of worshipping their guru, Sukracharya. One becomes strong in one's position, if they have a determined faith in the mercy of one brahmanas, if they have mercy of the cows, yes, then supreme personality of Godhead. And they always, if they worship the, these three people, then they are going to, the, 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 they, be, they become strong in one's position. And uh, that, that is how they can conquer the world also. If they are having mercy of the brahmanas, cows, supreme personality of Godhead and everything like that. And your spiritual master. So now um, Brahma is saying, see, you accept Vishwarupa here. He's the son of Tvashta and you accept him as your mm, guru. And this is what he gave instructions uh, to demigods, telling them that just be convinced he, they are son of Tvashta. You be, uh, just accept them as your guru. And then now, since you don't have a guru, Brahaspati is no longer here. So you just have a guru now and accept, uh, accept that person as 
guru like that he instructed them and uh, gave uh, good advice to them damai got they got relieved of their anxiety they went to vishwarupa embraced him and they kind of had the conversation with him see we are on the level of your parents so please try to fulfill our desire see you are like our son the highest duty of the son even though of uh, is to serve parents right you you are you are like a son to us and therefore we are looking for uh, as parents we are just looking for us to fulfill as a son to fulfill our desire and uh, we are defeated by the enemies so please relieve our distress through your austerities uh, since you are aware of the supreme personality of godhead uh, you know we accept you as our guru and we accept you as our director so now uh, what happened was uh, vishwarupa was also pleased with what the demigods happened to tell him and then he said yes i will become your disciple and you are the commanders of the universe how can't refuse your request to accept me mm, so you want me to accept this position how can when since you asked i have to accept this the true brahmana he maintains himself by accepting uh, silochana uh, but those who are caring for wealth uh, they have a very low mind how can i um, you know not accept what you have given me in terms of this position um although it is irreproachable i cannot refuse your order i will try to fulfill this is what vishwarupa is saying vishwarupa performed uh, all the priestly activities with attention and enthusiasm and then um what happened was uh, you know vishwarupa when uh, the obelations had to be offered Uh, he started op- offering these oblations indirectly to the demons as well that sort of created a very very uh, bad feeling indra happened to notice this and he said oh my god indirectly instead of uh, offering the oblations or i mean in, uh, offering instead of offering all of the um, um, all of the uh, uh, sacrifices sacrificial oblations to uh, the um, uh, to the uh, uh, you know to uh, i mean uh, sorry i'm sorry just got distracted instead of offering it to the demigods he started offering the oblations to the demons and they were also his relatives and indra became very very angry about this and he behead vishwarupa uh, vishwarupa the transformation of vishwarupa's three heads um, happened and indra repentantly accepted brahma hatya because he was a brahmana and you know with vishwarupa twatta was a brahmana and his wife was a, de- a demoniac is from a demoniac family that's how he started having some sort of uh, good feelings for the demons and he uh, started giving the oblations to the demons mm. and this was not accepted by indra and indra happened to get uh, very angry and because of this he behead vishwarupa now upon hearing this that uh, his son vishwarupa was beheaded by the demigods indra uh, father twashta obviously get got angry he was not very happy obviously his son is uh, twashta is twashta was very very angry and twashta performed a ritual to kill indra but during that he made a wrong pronunciation while offering oblations to the sacrifice this is what happened from the sacrificial fire, fire uh came a fearful personality who looked like the destroyer of the entire creation the demons uh, you know had this demon had a very very fearful feature being tall blackish gigantic lustrous uh and all of that and this demon covered all the planetary system by the dint of his austerity vritta means one who covers everything and now this person was called vritrasra and uh, demigods they attacked rutrasura but he swallowed all their weapons and the demigods they lost strength and um, uh, and then they tried to uh, please the supreme personality of godhead by worshiping them uh, so so a person i mean twashta wanted a son to become the destroyer of indra okay uh, but then he pronounced a mantra differently because of which uh, we have vritrasura and um, and now indra was not killed by vritrasura but that's what he wanted because of his pronunciation of the mantra he got a son uh, who was the, killed by indra and indra became the ruler of the universe uh, as a result so why i am telling you this story dear devotees is because uh, 
you know, we need to understand that what mantra we pronounce, that would yield the result. That's what happened with the Tatatriya also. The, the mantra that was pronounced by the parents had given the Tatatriya. Because that was the mantra that would give the result of the Tatatriya. Like that, if Twashta were to pronounce the correct mantra, then we would have had somebody who could have killed Indra. But that was not the case. Because the pronunciation went wrong, uh, we had Vritrasura, who, who uh, uh, you know, who was the devotee of the Lord. And uh, again, Indra ultimately uh, won. And he became the Lord of the universe and he was not killed by Vritrasura. Okay, so that's what I wanted to tell you devotees in terms of contrast as to how a mantra is very, very important because it leads you to a destination. Now we all chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So we all know what is the result that we have in store for us. When we chant the mantra, this is, this is what we have. That's kind of clearly explicit because of the mantra we chant. So the mantra we chant has a great effect and we need to ensure that we chant the mantra with full attention uh, because, again, this mantra is being spoken to a person. He is the personality of Godhead. And this mantra has to have love. When we chant the mantra, the love has to be there. Again, with Karma Kantiya mantras, the pronunciation is very, very important. But here, Krishna is Bhavagrahi Janatana. Our pronunciation is also not a problem, but our mood. The mood with which we chant our mantra is very important when it comes to devotional service. But with Karma Kandya, oh, the pronunciation has to be exact. It has to be, you know, again, um, there, there cannot be space between two words. If, if the space is not supposed to be there, then there should not be space. So certain conditions are to be met when you do the Karma Kandya rituals. That's why, and that's how it becomes potent. But for us, it's Krishna has made it very simple. You just chant your mantra. All you, you can chant it in however way you want. Even if you pronounce it wrong, I give you points, no problem. Uh, because some words don't come to some people, right? Rama, all this Krishna. Are we chanting it correctly? No problem. But we try our best to do it correctly. You know, as much as possible with the right pronunciation. But even if we do not do it, that's not a problem. All we need to do is just focus on the mantra and chant it with uh, love and attention. So this is this is the point here, devotees. Um, so next one will be, the next verse will be about four Kumaras. And then you will be learning about Nara Narayana, Krishna Garba, Prithu and Rishabhadeva. If you look at Dattatriya, are we supposed to follow his teachings of Dattatriya? This may be one of the questions that everybody will have. Mm, no, we do not. He's Avadut. And uh, the teachings of Avadut, Dattatriya is not usually followed by uh, people in Iskon. So we do not follow his teachings. He's Avadut and uh, it is more of impersonal philosophy. And hence, we do not follow that philosophy in practicality. All right, dear devotees, so the coming up, we would be seeing four Kumaras, Naranarayana, Prishni Karba, Prithu, and Rishabhati. We'll also be seeing Hayagriva, Matsya, Kurma, Narshima, um, Hari, that is Gajendra, Vamana, Hamsa Avatar, Manmantar Avatar, uh, Danvantri, Parashura, Ramachandra, Krishna, Vyasadev, Buddha, Kalki, and Gunavataras. So here 39 is 39, uh, I mean, 39 of them are going to be discussed and each one of them will be seen very, very briefly. And then as I told you, say, for example, we talk about Gajendra. Here it's just going to be told that, yeah, Gajendra is going to be attacked hmm, by a crocodile and the crocodile, what sort of prayers it will do. And hearing this Gajendra prayers, the Lord is going to appear and he's going to kill the crocodile. And he was going to lift the elephant. This is what will be seen. But we, when we come to the actual pastime, we will be seeing more of that as to what exactly happened, what you know, what was the scenery like, and what was the situation of Gajendra, and how he asked for help, what was his mood, what was the mood of surrender. All that would be explained as we go through Canto in depth, the later Cantos in depth. Okay, dear devotee. So this is just going to be an overview. Uh, a very, very brief synopsis and later past, later cantos will cover the pastime in depth.
at that time we can learn the teachings we can learn what is the lessons and what how we can apply uh, bhagavatam in our life all that would be realized and understood in the later classes with this we will stop dear devotees vanshya kalpata rubya shiva kripa sindhu bhi eva cha patita naam bhavani bhu vaishnavi bhu namo namaha ananta koti vaishnav vrind ki jai namacharya shri laharidas taku ki jai shri la prabhat ki jai gaur bhakta vrind ki jai All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Sri La Prabhat. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Thank you so much for today's elaborate discussion. Ah, uh, Atri, the son of Atri, and uh, the relationship between father and son. Uh, Mataji, I have two questions. Um, very quickly. Uh, so, uh, this was Lord Himself. Uh, coming as one of His uh incarnation, and yet He's. talking of the impersonal um, philosophy uh, so is it because of time place and circumstances at that time this philosophy was supposed to be uh, preached and that's why he did it so uh, as far as impersonal uh, philosophy goes mata ji it also existed at the time when uh, personal philosophy existed so it is anadi it both both of them existed hand in hand shiva i mean uh, this impersonal philosophy had to come for a reason um so because we have uh, three aspects of the lord and uh, people had very varied interests and you know some people wanted uh, to merge themselves in brahma jyoti and that's why that philosophy had to come into play but when it comes to uh, mm, you know what is right again there is variation right there is maya vada and that maya vada and uh, brahm uh, brahmavad is different maya vada and brahmavad brahmavad is the right way uh, you know the right way is brahmavad but people have misinterpreted and lot of uh, false teachings have come because of maya vada introduction of maya vada philosophy so that is what we need to be uh, cautious about because you know the brahmavad philosophers they do not respect disrespect the lotus feet of the lord which is why they are able to attain brahman realization when somebody is going to uh, have uh, insult insult the uh, lotus feet of the lord if they do not have reverence for the lotus feet of the lord then there is fall down they are not going to reach the destination that they desire it's not going to happen it is trame eva hi kevalam they may think as if they attained it but they cannot attain it because once you disrespect the personal form of the lord you cannot attain the destination of brahma jyoti and this is just not possible and um, that's where we need to understand that brahmavadis have this respect for lord through because of which they are able to go to the lord uh, and attain the impersonal form of the lord and merge into brahma which is a possibility this this existed from time uh, you know the time anadi right i mean we don't have a beginning for this this philosophy came into existence and that doesn't have a beginning to say yes this is where it started thank you thank you for that clarification uh, another question mata ji about the parents of uh, the lord so were they the same um, uh, like the uh, atri and ansuya kardamuni and devuti Uchi and Ayuthi, Ayuthi, uh, all these personalities were they the same uh, souls and then reincarnating in different uh, um, uh, phases, or were they different people? I don't think they are the same people, Mata Ji. They are different, uh, different only. Mm, they are not. Uh, I don't think. Did you get the information somewhere? I can clarify it. but i don't think they are same but did you get a somewhere like a reliable source or you are just posting it as a question i i thought i heard it somewhere but i'm not sure oh, okay let but me clarify that vasudev, devki and vasudev in this birth he, uh, oh, you the... gave vasudev and then in the previous birth you were so and so they um, oh that is there that is there uh, but then when it comes to datatreya and uh, the Others, I mean, that we are talking about here, uh, were they the plenary expansions? That I'm not sure. Um, I mean, with Krishna, yes, Krishna. I mean, that is all there. Krishna, they. I mean, Yashoda. All that is that that context of plenary expansion is being quoted. But then, when it comes to Datta Treya, his parents, do they have connection with uh, uh, somebody else? Uh, I, I, I definitely need to. I, uh, I definitely. Okay, Prabhu. I'll, okay, yeah. 
that i'll clarify mata ji i don't think that's the case but i can clarify if they are the plenary expansions of some other um parents okay. who have come before okay thank you thank you so much are there any other questions or comments in the group hare krishna yes yes prabhu ji hare krishna thank you for the wonderful class i'm very thankful thank you for your but uh, trying to follow up uh, just a question from the beginning uh, i i hope i'm audible you are now <coughs> you are audible okay. now only you are okay. audible okay please accept my humble obeisances mataji uh, thank you for the wonderful class uh, i just wanted to ask uh, you mentioned the manvantar manvantar avatars so i just need clarification of whether are them does this mean the manus are avatars are incarnations or are they they come as descendant they come as descendant in manu dynasty uh, in each manvantara so they subdue all the miscreant rulers whoever is miscreant they subdue that so in each manvantara we will have a change of the manu they the rule the world and they subdue the miscreant rulers uh, they are the descendant in manu dynasty so um, and uh, like swayambhu manu he was the first manu then like that so each reign there would be a manu who who's responsible for maintaining that uh, maintaining that uh, the, that universe for that period of time so okay, who's our manu who who is our manu at the moment who is our manu anybody knows so i am buva if i can take a guess That so i am buva man is it anybody has any other answers or it is vaivashwata manu right vaivashwata yes our manu is vaivashwata manu that is a current manu who is there okay 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 mataji i know you are pressed for time and there are lots of things that are calling your attention so we will um, we have exhausted our time anyway so uh, let us all chant hari krishna maha mantra in glorification of radhika kasuri mataji and then end the session hari krishna hari hari krishna 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 hari 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 rama hari rama 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 hari 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 श्री हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा